In this week's episode of Studio Inter, we'll be previewing the match against Torino. We've got a Sheridan Bird commentator to talk th- us through this uh, Inter start with Conte. This week's Moratti, Frog and Moji, and much, much more. Everything here on Studio Inter, only on centreinter.com. <laughs> Recupera Brazovic, andiamo in contropiede, la porta è vuota, tira, attenzione, e gol, e gol! Benvenuti, bentornati to another edition of Studio Inter. I'm your host, Matalello Iruzzari, wishing you welcome to the beginning of the end of 2019 for Inter, at least, as this is the final stretch uh, of games that will go on from now until Christmas, uh, when they've decided not to copy the Premier League, thank God and uh, have games during Christmas, during the Christmas break, which I absolutely hated. Uh, so, uh, but before we get to all of that, I'd like to welcome our panel. Um, uh, I'd like to welcome uh, all the way from uh, Dubai, uh, the Semprinter.com preview writer, Mr. Mohamed Nasser. Hey guys, great to be back and great to be looking towards the end of the international break. Yes, a uh, very interesting international break as, as that as well. Uh, and we're also joined by our good friend Fulvio Santucci, who does uh, Il Nero Lazzurro. He's a, he, he's, 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 he's a Twitter superstar on Inter-Twitter. Uh, <laughs> I know he hates me saying that, but that's why I do it. So welcome, Fulvio. <laughs> Hello, Nima. Hello, everybody. It's good to be here. Yeah. And thank you. Thank you for the great presentation. Probably not deserved, but still. <laughs> uh, and we are also joined by the now... Mid twenties, uh, Will Beckman. How are you, Will? Happy birthday! Happy be- happy belated birthday! Thank you. Yes, I'm I'm old now. I'm no longer the baby of the pod. I'm yes, sorry. Yes, you you're always going to be younger than everyone here. So you know, that's but just comparatively, you know, it's not as it's not as big a deal when we're all old. You know, <laughs> the gap between seventy and eighty isn't as big as the gap between twenty and thirty. So that's, that's true. You know. But you, but you're not you're not thirty. You're twenty five. So I don't. I'm see not twenty five. The... No, you're 22, 23. What, like, what are you? The, 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 the only one you didn't say. Yeah. <laughs> 21. <laughs> no, tw- tw- I'm 24. <laughs> Let's move on. This is a disastrous start to the pod. <laughs> and we are joined by a good friend of the show. Uh, he's a Serie a, uh, he's a Serie a commentator. He used to be on Sports Media Set. And he'd like me, uh, he, 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 like, he told me to introduce him as a journalist and broadcaster living in Milan, because that's the truth. Uh, he's also my favorite Serie A commentator with an ornithological name. Welcome, Mr. Sheridan Bird. Thank you very much. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. and glad you like my surname. <laughs> well, I, I, I like I like I like your entire name because I think it's a kick-ass name. I love Sheridan because I used to watch Keeping Up with Appearances when I was a kid, mm-hmm. and being called Bird <laughs> is awesome. So <laughs> you know. yeah, I know it's it's a name that people <laughs> remember. I can definitely say that. And uh, yeah, God, God bless my parents. <laughs> Indeed, God bless all parents everywhere. Right, let's uh, let's start. Um, you and I have spoken in the uh, we've spoken a little bit, and I know that you and I uh, both share um, a, a kind of affinity and uh, uh, for for Antonio Candreva. Obviously, me not as much as you, but <laughs> I mean, uh, has he? He's had quite the. He's he's had quite the 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 resurrection or uh, during Antonio Conte and and it's pretty, I mean we knew he was going to do well because he always does well under Conte and I think that that role suits him, but I I personally did not expect him to do this well as he's been Inter's probably most consistent performer, so I'd like to ask you I mean you know objectively speaking did you think he would be this good and what what do you think the future holds for him going on? Well, Is this the flash it, it, of the pan. Well, if I can just give a tiny bit of background, a friend of a good friend of mine here in Milan, a guy called Scott Pugnetti, is an Inter season ticket holder. And last year, he, like a lot of the Inter fans, were hammering poor old Tony Candreva. And I, I sort of noticed that, so I started mocking him by going on about how I love Candreva. Um, <laughs> But he was a quality player at Lazio, and I had this discussion with so many friends, journalists, um, you know, even ex-football players, that the the Candreva at Lazio and early on at Inter was a decent goal-scoring midfielder stroke, you know, uh, winger, whatever you want to call it. Um, So I'm really pleased that he's uh, he's back to life under Antonio Conte. He's lost a bit of weight. He's shaved off the, uh, the (laughs) the tramp beard. And he really is he really is playing well. So I didn't expect him to be this good though. I mean the man is reborn. Mm, for sure. For sure. Um Fulvio? 
Yeah, uh, hi Sheridan. Um, I would like to know um, your opinion about uh, what uh, Conte need, uh, in or, he needs in order to uh, to have uh, the strong team that he wants. You know, when we're talking about Mercato, and now we are we have like two months left before uh, starting with the Mercato, uh, we always talk about a midfielder, but it's difficult to understand which kind of midfielder, as for skills, as for experience, uh, Conte really needs. So, what's your opinion about that? If you need to name the, the best player, the best sign for Inter in the January transfer window, uh, what would you say? Yes, that's a very good question, uh, Fulvia. I would say that the first thing that I, I believe Conte and Inter need is something you can't buy, and that's a bit of luck. Because with injuries, they've been very unlucky with Sensi, with Alexi Sanchez. So they need a bit of fortune on the injury front. Uh, maybe a bit more quality in midfield, someone who can step in when Brozovic is tired, because obviously Brozovic is, is human. So I can't think of any names of anyone that's available, but maybe just a, a bit of extra quality in midfield, someone who can come in when Brozovic has a break. I think in attack, I think they're well covered. Um, and for the record, I hope they keep Matteo Boletano, because I think he's a, a wonderful player. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good answer. Uh, Will? Hi, Sheridan. I, I wanted to I wanted to pick your brains on the the um, the sfuriata that Conte gave us a few weeks ago before the um, before the match against Verona or after the match against Borussia Dortmund, to be more specific. There was a lot of discussion on last week's pod about whether he was whether there was a strategy or whether he was just a, an angry man shouting in in the general direction of the interviewer that was stood next to him. Um, do you think he's right? And in what he said, you know, uh, essentially saying that Inter didn't didn't plan things properly in the summer, and that he he, he trusted situations that he shouldn't have trusted, um, and that uh, and that Inter are sort of uh, under equipped to to compete for the objectives they've set themselves. Or do you think this is just Conte being well being his normal self? What, 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 what was your thoughts on what went on a couple of weeks ago and how it sort of died down since? Well, first of all, happy belated birthday. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you. you. Hope you had a lot Get of... the most important business done first. Yeah, no, birthdays are important. Um, you know, and I, <laughs> I hope was... you had safe, good, safe fun. Well, I was delighted it fell on an international break. <laughs> this is this normally happens. I had a friend who had his birthday on the day of Inter Juve a month ago. That wasn't great. So no. I'll I'll take this I'll take this day. Anyway. As, for, as for matters <laughs> matters that don't uh, preclude to your birth. Um, after the match, Conte's outburst, I actually found it very funny because it was confirmation that, you know, despite I have a lot of respect for him, um, but he is just, at times, he is a big crybaby. So I found it quite amusing. I thought he wasn't particularly generous to his players that had been signed from uh, less glamorous clubs like Cagliari and Sassuolo. Um, naturally, he was frustrated because his team had just, you know, thrown away a two-goal lead in a crucial match. So... There was emotion there. I think he's someone that um, you know could benefit from a bit of a uh, someone in the dressing room or in the inter staff needs to say to him, look, before you go on TV, before you speak, count to ten. Because what he said, I don't think it would. I, I mean, that's what my dad used to say to me. Believe it or not, um, and uh, a lot a long time ago. But uh, the, the situation with Conte was that I think he's been or he was quite well backed by Inter in the summer. Um, I think they got the targets that he wanted, but coaches, managers, whatever whatever you want to call them, they are greedy by nature because they're winners. And, and, and he probably did want a few others, but I think it was a bit more he was reacting. He was angry because of the uh, second half blackout or black and blue out, if you will, against Dortmund. Ooh, nice. Yeah, Ooh, nice one, nice uh, one. No, my pleasure. Um, so he was frustrated. He does get a bit carried away, um, but I think Inter backed him, and he got he he got some. He received some great signings. It was just Conte being a bit dramatic, which he has a tendency to do. Uh, Mo, do you have a question for Sheridan? Yeah, just um, you know, maybe now is a nice time to reflect. We're getting into the final stretch before the end of the new year, and uh, you know, we've seen uh, we've seen um, top contenders capitulate in uh, Napoli and. Uh, you know, Ronaldo maybe having a bit of a fractious relationship with uh, with Sarri. Um, 
if Inter go out and do reinforce, you know, in one or two positions decently, uh, wh- where do you think they should uh, look towards uh, the second half of the season? Um, should 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 the team and the management show the same sort of restraint they had with um, with uh, exposing what their objectives and their intents for the season are, or should should Inter be a bit more ambitious and you know? take uh, what they've been given in, in terms of like losing a, a contender for, for, for the second or even for first place in Napoli and, and really push for getting some silverware domestically this season? Well, I think Inter's biggest chance of a trophy this season is, uh, is Serie A, but that will be very difficult for reasons I'll, I'll, I'll come on to uh, in a minute. I mean, as for their objectives, I honestly believe, I mean, the view over here is that Conte, he's not going to, you know, been off the Champions League. He's not a lunatic, but I think he wants to, this season with this squad, he wants to bring the Scudetto back to the city of Milan. And I think that would be something he'd love to do. I think that is more of a, a priority than the Champions League because I just don't think, I don't think many Inter fans believe the squad are equipped to, to win the Champions League. So I think the target should be, uh, domestically, should be Serie A. But having said that, the, the squad depth that Juventus boasts means that Juventus are going to have to have a, a really big collapse or injury crisis or dip in form for that to happen. So, like I say, if if Juventus you know don't suffer an unprecedented um, uh, collapse, I think Inter the best they can do is finish second, and that's no disrespect to Inter, but it's just the fact that this Juventus are a relentless machine. But like I say, I really think that um, Conte's dream for this season is to bring the Scudetto back to the city of Milan and then worry about the Champions League in uh, in, in the future. Mm, nice one. Well, speaking of that, how do you think the Serie A will finish? I mean, um, if, if we were to go from, you know, just the European places, from places six to one, um, who do you think, uh, how do you think the, the season will end? Okay, well, champions. I just think the champions are going to be Juventus again. I just they've got you guys know more than anyone. Inter fans, you know, know, they have got that winning DNA. So I think they'll win the Scudetto, which is boring for people outside Italy and non-Juventus fans. But I think they'll make it nine in a row. Second will be Inter. I really think it will be Inter. Uh, third, uh, that's a difficult one because as as uh, my my beloved uh, Napoli are trying to end their season as early as possible. <laughs> Uh, I really don't know. Third, I mean, Roma could put on a nice little run. Atalanta are dark horses, but, uh, you know, squad depth could be a problem there. So one to six, I honestly can't give you a prediction one to six because it's an absolutely, you know, after Juventus and Inter, it's a ludicrous season. I think we can uh, rule out Milan getting a Champions League spot, which might make some of you, you know, chuckle. But Stefano Pioli. Oh, bless him. Yeah. Padre, Padre Pioli as your mates in the <laughs> Yeah, 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 exactly. They've been quite they've been quite savage about him. But uh, yeah, they've I think... been hilarious about him. I mean, this season I think is the Alto Goals. I mean, it's worth lo- learning Italian just for this season, I think. It's been hilarious. Yeah, they're very witty guys, and two of them are, are into fans, you'll be pleased to know. Um the other one's the Juventus fan. But no, I think first Juventus, second Inter. OK, I'm going to hope that third is um, Napoli. And fourth, I think Roma might sneak ahead of Lazio and Atalanta. Mm, that's a good one. So who do you think will win the Coppa Italia and who will become Cop- the Capo Cannoniere? Uh, the Coppa Italia. I'd forgotten that, about that, that. That existed, but it does exist, the Coppa Italia. Uh, I was going to ask, when you, when you said Inter's best chance of winning silver was Serie A, I thought, was that a sort of a, a dig at Conte's inability to manage the cuts? But you actually just forgot that the Coppa Italia was... Uh, I think like most, yeah, like, mo- like most people, sensible people, I forgot the Coppa Italia. You know, Juventus could win that. because Last year, they, had, they, they basically took their eye off the ball and they got destroyed by Atalanta in January. January. But if, if Juventus don't meet Atalanta, they'll win it. Um, you know, Inter have got a chance of winning that. But I don't think if they do win it, Inter, and there are photographs after the match of the team celebrating with the trophy, I don't think Conte will have a particularly big grin. Do you guys? 
<laughs> no, 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 I don't. I really don't. Unless Would they you... beat Juve in the final. Yeah, that, that's nice the only way. That, that's the only way that could that could happen, actually. Um, but what about the Capo Cannoniere? Do you think that Cristiano will be able to 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 achieve his goal of winning everything in England, uh, Italy, and uh, Spain on both an individual level? And uh, a team level because that's what he's missing a Capo Cannoniere title and a Coppa Italia. You've already said you think he'll do it in Coppa Italia. What about Capo Cannoniere? Well, I mean, I, when, when Ronaldo was growing up on the island of Madeira, he did say to his, his mother he wanted to win the Coppa Italia. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's, that, is, that is why he. <laughs> obviously. No, yeah. Capo Cannoniere is a difficult one because, <laughs> yeah, Ronaldo, just by volume of uh, of goals, shots, penalties, you think he'd be he'd have a strong chance. But there are others who are flying. Ciro Immobile is looking very sharp this season. Uh, I think it'll be the usual suspects. You know, I, I, it's a bit of a boring answer, I admit. But aside from Quagliarella, I think it'll be uh, the usual suspects. Um, it'll be nice to see a, a new face in there, but I think it'll be one of the one of the guys who's won it over. Uh, uh, recent years, or someone who has a really good sort of end to the season, someone who uh, pops up in spring. Mm, yeah, yeah, probably. So, so uh, Milan fans can hope for Piontek then. Bless him, Piontek. He, he's, uh, <laughs> it's not going too well for him. Me, a few of the Milan fans I know have sort of started turning on him as well. So, when the people that loved him have started doubting him, it's a, uh, it's, it's a miserable day. I, I like him for the fact that his name translates to uh, Christopher Friday and there's endless puns and p- potential gags you can make with that but uh, this season it's Friday I'm not in love <laughs> Ooh, nice one I'm really, <laughs> like, I'm really nice. liking the puns um, no but uh, yeah and, and your own Napoli there I mean I, I, I personally thought Napoli were going to finish second uh, I didn't think this, this thing was because it looks like it's imploding completely imploding and I'm curious to hear if you think that Ancelotti will be sacked, or do you think the Laurentiis will sell the club? As being, it's being reported that uh, the the same owners that own PSG are looking to buy buy Napoli. What do you make of that whole situation? Well, uh, anything and everything that you just said could happen with Napoli. Uh, Ancelotti won't be there next season. I think he'll see out this season, uh, but he won't be there for the start of 2020, 2021. I don't think De Laurentiis would sell either because I think he enjoys having Napoli. Um, I'm not sure if Napoli enjoys having him, <laughs> but uh, no, it's it's an absolute it's an absolute you know it's an absolute shambles really to be quite honest. Um, I don't want to be too rude about De Laurentiis or, or Ancelotti. I love Ancelotti. I don't know if we've spoken about him before because I know he's Milan and not Inter, but I I think he's been an an amazing ambassador for Italian football across the world. I mean, he's won. He's won important leagues in um, in England, Germany, and less important leagues in France. Um, and, uh, and he won the Champions League with Real Madrid. But I do think that these last few years, he looks like a man who's lost the fire within. And he was never that aggressive or determined, seemingly so, anyway. So, yeah, I think uh, it's got, the wheels have really come off with Napoli. And a top four finish, I think, would be, would be, uh, would be highly commendable. Hmm. Nice one. Um, and, uh, yeah, did you have a question, Will? I was just going to say that whatever happens with Napoli, they'll still beat Inter at the San Paolo. So that's one Probably. thing they can rely on. Yeah, that's true. Death taxes and Inter losing at the San Paolo. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. I mean, last time, Icardi scored a penalty that um, that someone called useless on uh, Instagram. And his wife, <laughs> said, his wife said, not as useless as your sister's reproductive organs. That was, that was Lily Adani who did that. Oh, uh, yeah, it was, yeah, it was yeah, La Reconcha Tu Hermana. Yeah, that yeah. Was, yeah some powerful she was shouting at the television one. I, I, was, I, I couldn't stop laughing when I saw that on Instagram. I think I, I, think I wrote you, Fulvio. I think I sent you a voice note, cry <laughs> laughing. When yeah. she did that. <laughs> La regoncha tu Except- hermana es inutil. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, and uh, yeah, that brilliant. that that post was uh, was cancelled right minutes after. But yeah. uh, you know, web is the web, and uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it was viral at some point, right? I was I was I was dying. Yeah. I was dying when she said, it. and that was like, if I'm not mistaken, that was like pretty much in like when when things were at its worst, wasn't it? Like, when... well, that was the penultimate week of the season. That's when we yeah. were going to miss out on the top four. That was yeah. Prime soap opera. In you know. Odil. Yeah, it was it was brilliant. It was Argentinian soap opera at its best. Um, if people want to follow you on Twitter, uh, what's your Twitter handle? 
Uh, it's, it's just my name is Sheridan Bird, but as I always say to you, it's uh, you know I don't tweet a lot, and um, when I do, it's it's not massively interesting. It really um, is though. This oh, is the second time you bless you, bless no, you. No, no, because you've actually made me laugh out loud for real at least oh. three times that I can remember. So oh, you need to own the fact you need to own the fact that you're actually really funny on Twitter. No, you I know that. No, I, I fully accept that. I embrace that. I boast about that. But on Twitter, I don't tend to tweet very often. Um, uh, I occasionally tweet, uh, you know, f amusing pictures or, <laughs> or wordplay, but people are welcome to follow me. But as I always say, go outside, go outside, go in nature. <laughs> oh, Jesus. At Sheridan Bird, thank you so much for coming on. It's always a pleasure to have you. And for your sake, I hope Napoli doesn't, doesn't experience this complete meltdown that we're seeing now. Yeah, thank you very much. And, and can I just finish with a question for you, Inter, guys? Uh, absolutely. Uh, if we've got time, uh, another friend of mine here is a, an Inter fan, um, and this season he's sort of withdrawn his support. And when I asked him, it said he said it's because Conte, Marotta, and Pintus remind him of another club from northern Italy that wears stripes. <laughs> now this is a genuine. It's not. It's not what the young people call trolling. It's a genuine question. Do you guys sense a bit of? I mean, does it feel a bit weird having the the Ex uh, Juventus captain and coach in Conte, Marotta, the man, the fixer behind the scenes, and uh, Antonio Pintus, who made them, who made Juventus and Real Madrid into sort of superhumans like Robocop, and is now doing the same with Inter. Um, what do you guys think of having such a heavy presence of that other side from Northern Italy? I think it's modern football. Uh, I think it's in, like that. I mean, with the generation of the Totti's and the uh, Zanetti's and Del Piero's and Maldini's. I think they were the last bandiera. I think that kind of, I think that's modern football, really. I think it's inevitable. I don't particularly like it, but I think, you know, when when it's a fact of life that you can't really do anything about, then you why moan about it? Just make the best out of the situation, I guess. But I'm keen to hear what you think, uh, Fulvio, about this, because, I mean, obviously being from Italy and all that. Yeah, of course. So, well, uh, let's say that uh, there's a lot of discussion into the Italian fan base since the beginning, since the, the announcement on the on late May, and uh, I made very clear my point since the beginning. My point is that uh, Inter is not winning uh, and it's not lifting trophies since nine years, and that's completely unacceptable for the history of Inter, and people need to realize that at some point. So what uh, Inter did uh, is to um, is to sign the people that know how to win. They were released from uh, from the former clubs, and they know how to win. So I think that's that's the bad shot uh, Hinter had to to try lifting some trophies. And uh, any people uh, who help Inter lifting some trophies, uh, for my my opinion, for my side, is more than welcome. Mm. That's that's pretty much where I am as well. I don't know if Mo and Will, if you guys di if you guys differ with it. Yeah, but... I I always say. Uh, I mean, look. Conte, uh, Conte to Juve is probably different than, to, than Trapattoni is to Juve, but the reason the 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 team that made me fall in love with uh, with Inter is Trapattoni's uh, mm. Inter. So, so so for me, uh, like Fulvio said, it's uh, it's not so much modern football as much as it is putting the club ahead of everything. And if, if these people are going to work for the club and for the trophies and for the history of Inter, it's not going to be an Antonio Conte Scudetto. Or a Marotta Champions League, or a Pintus, uh, you know, uh, whatever. Uh, Coppa, Coppa Italia, Italia. Coppa Italia. <laughs> 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 you know. Yeah. But uh, you know, it, it, it is for Inter, and then uh, you know, we've had managers that I've uh, been very fond of uh, move, go on and uh, manage other teams, you know, uh, elsewhere that I'm not so fond of, but you still remember them for what they did for the club with with uh, fondly you know so for me I, I i as long as as long as you know we we refrain from saying inter is and you know insert blank like black and white esque in any sort of adjective i'm fine you know <laughs> um, is there anybody that you you is there anyone that you guys would never accept in the inter coaching staff is there is Look, there anyone i don't want to call that but yeah <laughs> Luciano Moji, Luciano <laughs> Moji, Bettega, <laughs> you know any of the I, any of the, I, any of the triad. I, never, I could not accept, uh, and it's not a Juventus thing. I could not accept uh, Rafa Benitez. Oh. It broke my heart. It yeah. broke my heart. Yeah, like yeah, the yeah. Benitez months really broke my heart. So yeah. 
going from Mourinho to Mourinho, going from Mourinho to Benitez was like it yeah. was it was horrible. That was the worst part. It was like you know you were in heaven and then you were dragged to hell, and and it was just, <laughs> quite. Well, it was, I think that's quite <laughs> dramatic. But I guess <laughs> but I mean, I'm a champions with Benitez, and I have some respect. Oh, for goodness' sake! No, 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 no. It's for me. For me, I mean, I I just think it's funny that. I mean, I remember when Marco Materazzi and Conte were both playing, and Materazzi referred to Antonio Conte as a fat, bald rat, and I and and that 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 seems <laughs> nobody else seems to remember that, and they and they don't seem to bring it up when they meet either, or and that just seems to be conveniently forgotten because they well, they ha- they had a little bit of a spat, if you remember Fulvio, uh, <laughs> they hated each other at some well, point. Materazzi was part yeah. of the worst day of Conte's playing career, wasn't he? <laughs> in in Perugia, wasn't yeah. he? He was. Well, he was well, the 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 Benita, the Benita tale was uh, was like similar to the the Brian Clough one, if you know that. <laughs> like uh, when Brian Clough went to Leeds United and said, uh, "Okay, you you uh, you you won anything last year, but from now on you're nothing, right?" And Benitez did the same yeah. thing, right? It is, which is not the best way to uh, to to put to put um to put a group like that into your way, right? And uh, yeah, practically. Mm, that, that was that was a story. That was a similar story, and after that, Benitez uh, actually did not have any success, any any major success into the European football. So probably was it was it was for the good. It was better like that. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. Sure. The, the the Conte and Materazzi stuff. It also resurfaced on. Uh, I'm going to say a date now that might make you guys a bit sad, but oh. May 2002. Conte was quite. Uh, jubilant in the dressing room after that so you can understand why there, there was bad blood between Materazzi and Conte but uh, yeah it's fascinating to hear that and I, I think it's all of you said partially that it's modern football and you're right really I, I always have this argument with friends about how football players and football coaches they're not fans they're business people and they yeah. go where they're, where they're wanted where they're given a salary and where they think they can be valued. So I completely, I completely understand what you're saying. I think there are maybe one or two. Ned, Ned Ved working with him <laughs> did, did make me. I nearly fell off my chair. That was that would be impossible. Um, you know, certain people like that. But you know, it's, it's a it's a good answer. But as as uh, as you said, Nima, that uh, uh, modern football is like that. And ever since we saw Inter wearing that away shirt, that red away shirt, it doesn't yeah. really. You know, anything can happen. Moratti got screwed on that. The only reason Inter did that was because they were bringing in, I think it was Kenny Wang, who was going to buy a third of Inter. And they, they wore that red shirt to, to kind of, you know, to, to promote themselves in China. And then that entire, entire uh, deal fell apart. Um, and, and Inter wore a red shirt for no reason at all. Well, it was, um, <laughs> yeah, the red, the red shirt and the other one I'll never forget, and I actually quite liked, was the Sprite third kit. You liked that? That's tainted with Hapoel Beersheba. I'm sorry. Well, yeah. yeah, exactly. It, exactly. It, will be, it will be forever linked to that game. Yeah. Yes, it will be. Well, it, it also, and I have one of those shirts. Now, Why? respect. Respect. I Why? didn't. Because I don't control my Christmas presents. <laughs> no, Someone hates Christmas me. does. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, it, for me, it'll always be linked <laughs> with. Uh, I was commentating on a match into a way against someone, so Inter had to wear that. And Felipe, Felipe, I mean, I know we're talking about football, but I'm going to mention Felipe Melo. Um, he, he, was, he, was, he was playing in that game and he, he was, I, I was sort of trained. Trained is a very posh word. I was told, we were told uh, when we were learning to commentate, because I didn't have very much training. It was about half an hour chat in, the, in a, an establishment. But we were asked not to be too critical because I completely admit that I'm terrible at football so I never criticize people who miss a good chance or an easy chance because I write and talk about the football because I was I am terrible at it but Felipe Melo made me sick and I was watching a um first half in which he got booked and he should have been sent off and uh in that uh, sprite kit and uh, he didn't come out for the second half because he was substituted by I think it was Mancini and I remember sort of when, when he didn't come out the tunnel, I, I was happy because my eyes would stop hurting. But I was, <laughs> but I was also quite sad. And I, remember, I remember saying, I remember saying um, Felipe Melo hasn't returned for the second 45 minutes. His interpretation of football has finished for today. <laughs> that's, that, that's good. That's great. That's great, Sheridan. Uh, yeah, and, hope, and thankfully, I think his interpretation of football has finished generally. And I think he's retired now, isn't he? Or is he still playing for Sao Paulo or was it Palmeiras? Even? I think he was Palmeiras. at Palmeiras. 
Yeah, I think he was a he was at Palmeiras just kicking people, and worse yeah. than that, wearing a sweatband above his elbow like Justin Timberlake did in oh, two thousand and three. Oh dear lord! Yeah. <laughs> well, very yeah, good times, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, cl- classic times, classic times. <laughs> Kuzmanovic, Melo, Gargano, Mud- Mudingai. <laughs> good times, good times. The right. Dark Age. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, Matsari and and, v- and and Vidic talking English in press conferences, or interpreting some form of English in press conferences. I, anyway, I coach you play. <laughs> I coach you player. Me Tarzan, you Jane. Don't yeah. badmouth Walter Matsari. Think oh, about that's... what's coming up. Yes, that, yeah. we're going to get to that. Sheridan, we're going to let you go. It's always, as always, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on. It was it was a pleasure for me, guys. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the season. Give uh, Kandreva as much love as you can muster. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, good, good luck to Inter, because like I say, a lot of my friends will be very happy if they uh, do something this year. Thanks, Sheridan. Take care. Bye, Sheridan. Yeah. Right. Um, can yes, we yes. can we just bookmark black and blue out? Because I think we should be quite good if we could reuse that in future podcasts. I, I think that's that's a nice little turn of phrase from that Sheridan's tell you what, left with us. T- t- tell you what, write it down in your little notebook, and then you can use it when every time you're on. Fantas- right? I, don't, I don't have a notebook. <laughs> I'm, we'll make I'm a mental a, note a, of it. I, I said, <laughs> I'll put it on the computer. Yes. Know. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm a third can, can I, Yeah, go go go. Can I, can I yeah, just Mo. also say uh, about, about uh, Felipe Melo? You know, the really sad thing is uh, when Mel- by the time Melo came, when we had Melo and Medel and double pivot, this was actually the end of the the end you, of the battle. Do you remember? Era. Do you remember like, the Derby d'Italia when <laughs> Mancini named the midfield three of Medel, Melo, Condoglia? That, you know, this, that, that, that's this is that's football IQ for you. <laughs> the, the, the real sad thing about this is this isn't the worst of this wasn't the worst of times. This oh, was, no. this you know, good. this was this you was know, the rebuild, yeah, light at this the end of the tunnel, the exactly. Yeah. For me, for you me, can, you, guys, M Villa, uh, Jan M Villa, Kuzmanovic, M Mudingai. For me, that was uh, or Gargano or you know that for Tomas me, Tomas Rocky, yeah, Scalotto, <laughs> like that was. That was that was and Jonathan and yeah like that that really that there I felt like yeah this isn't good <laughs> like this is history I've seen the treble that's history and this is also history we like, we, is... we can take Conte given that that's where we've come from you know yes exactly <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah it's true speaking, speaking uh, of uh, me me Tarzan Eugene uh, coach Mr Walter Mazzari who who improved on his English when Watford the social media people at Watford decided to I think what I can only assume is lock him into a cabin together with an English teacher for seven days. And the result was him speaking English when he was at Watford is probably the funniest thing I have seen in my life. I, I remember, I think it was you who tweeted this out for you. I think that's how I got to know you, actually, when you tweeted out this video of uh, him speaking English and you were just crying with laughter. And I think I joined you dying, saying like this was one of the funniest things I ever said. But now we play him and his Torino, who have struggled this uh, in the beginning of this season, but they've turned it around now, and they're looking really, really good, and they do play some good football, and they have a striker in Andrea Belotti, who I absolutely rate, who never stops running, and who I think will cause Inter all sorts of problems, um, especially uh, especially the defense. But I'm, I'm keen to hear what you think, Fulvio, because now we've seen Godin, uh, we've seen Godin struggle to the right of that three-man defense, and we've seen Milan Skriniar actually enjoy playing in that right right uh, def- uh, the, the, to the right side of the def- of that three man defense my personal opinion is keep Skriniar there keep the fry where he is and get the, play godin on the left or bastoni what do you think well uh, the the calendar actually helps your uh, your opinion because uh, let's just not forget that uh, after the torino match uh, we're going to have the the crucial match in prague for the champions league and sure. normally, yeah, normally Godin is playing into the Champions League. So what I expect is that Bastoni will be will be confirmed, uh, even because uh, he's, he's playing very good, to be honest, right? It's sure. 20 euros, but uh, but seems uh, seems to have a, a confidence that uh, it's not uh, related to to the age. So I would I would confirm that, uh, and that's uh, that's something that uh, I I can think about uh, when uh, we are coming to the to the Champions League match, in which probably. 
it's better to have Godin because uh, the the opponents uh, play in a different way, right? More open play, less catenaccio or something like that. Um, coming about Torino, uh, that's that, that's a very tough match, guys. I will tell you, that's a very tough match because uh, the game plan, the game plan of Torino is to let the opponents play in bad, right? That's the that's the Mazzari style of playing, to be honest. So what I expect is to have a tough match uh, with uh, with a um, few occasions, few chances to score. So our uh, our strikers should be very able to to take the the maximum benefit from the chance that um, that Torino will concede. Even because uh, you you told you told about Belotti, but uh, in my opinion, uh, um, Torino have one of the best goalkeeper into the Serie A, which is Salvatore mm-hmm. Sirigu. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, that's that's probably with with uh, Itzo and the Belotti. Uh, they are probably the, the the guys that keep Torino up in the in the um, in the standing. Mm. Um, so that's that's something that uh, we should not forget. So what I expect is to is it's a tough match. So Torino couldn't play uh, don't don't play actually a, a good football, uh, a funny football. But they always uh, let the, let the opponents play bad, and uh, they are very agonistic, right? So they they commit fouls, uh, and so they try to break the match uh, with fouls whenever they can, and try to break the rhythm of the match. And uh, let's remember that uh, Inter Sconte is uh, all about the rhythm, or about uh, all about the intensity into the match. So what I expect from Torino is to break this. And try to try to play the occasions uh, because unfortunately we are witnessing that Inter concede this season more than well, more, more than the last one. So yeah, it's tough. I I expect something really really tough to 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 achieve. I agree. I agree one hundred percent with that. And um, <clears throat> and also Mazzari has always proven to be a difficult coach. Uh, to for 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 all teams to play, especially teams that like yeah. as you said and like some, to control the ball. And Lima, something that came in my mind right now is that um, is that also Torino play with a with a defense of three players. Yeah. So that means that they can mirror they can mirror Inter in some way. And uh, we witness into this season that uh, teams that mirror Inter are always have a good chance to to not lose the match. So yeah. we we need to we really we really need to to um, to have uh, Lautaro Martinez uh, in the in the bad shape because uh, we need something out of the box here. For sure, and we need, uh, and we all, and we all know that Cristiano Ansaldi is going to be the best left back in the world on that day, because that's what happens when we play him. He was absolutely horrible and shocking at Inter, but whenever he plays against Inter, since then he's been dal. It's like Dalbert, you know. It's like yeah. the curse of the left back. It's just the left wing. It's it's unbelievable. Um, and Mo, I'm keen to hear what you think. Um, do you, who? Uh, do you? I mean, I, I based on what Fulvio has said. I mean, do you? Do you? What do you think Inter have to do to break them down? Uh, to break uh, uh, to break um, Torino down. I think uh, more than anything is pray that Sensi is uh, fit and uh, ready and uh, and in form. You know, um, I, I I agree with Fulvio that uh, Lautaro. You know, Lautaro's. Uh, uh, his fantasy outside uh, around the 18-yard box is 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 going to be important in unlocking that that final that final pass through to Lukaku or that final shot or whatever. But uh, more importantly, um, sense his ability to find spaces in and about you know uh, the center uh, the center of the pitch, uh, relieving pressure and, and and popping up in all those spaces will be crucial when when you play the I play against a, a, a Mazzari team. In any way, so um, I, I think the, the match can be won in one of many ways. Uh, one of which is, you know, brute force and like knock, huffing and puffing and knocking on the doors. But that's not a guaranteed. That's not a surefire thing. Uh, Mazzari teams and their organization can and have resisted, uh, especially when motivated, extended periods of pressure. So I think the surefire way of of of, of winning the match is. Uh, like Fulvio said, through a bit of out of the box magic, literally and figuratively, uh, <laughs> through either either Lautaro or uh, uh, or Sensi. Well, um, I will. How many goals do you think Simone Zaza will score? Because that's also written in the cards, isn't it? He was a Conte favorite, um, and he and he and he's uh, you know, and then you have Ansaldi. Uh, so, so I mean, I, and and then you have Mazzari as well. So, what, what are you thinking here? 
Well, Zad's obviously um, he's probably not Conte's favourite striker anymore after his ridiculous penalty run up <laughs> in the Euro 2015 <laughs> semi final. Um, so, no, uh, I, I, I don't think he will score because I. I uh, I, I don't think this will be there'll be many goals at all uh, in this match. I mean, he of course he could he could be the one that that uh, somehow sneaks one in off his backside or something when there's a a penalty box melee going on. But no, I'm not I'm not really I'm not too worried about about Simone Zadza, more, or at least not more than I am about this match as a whole. Um, one positive I would say is that uh, Torino did win before the international break against uh, Fabio Grosso's Brescia 4-0. And uh, that means that they, they're not coming into this match off of what would have been a seven-game winless run. Um, that, would have been, that would have made this match particularly nasty, I think. Yeah. Um, so that, that's one thing that makes me slightly less scared of this match. Um, oh, it's going to be tough. I, I don't really have much to add in terms of what the game will be like. Sensi will be key. Uh, Torino are horrible. Mazzari has some kind of hex over us. Remember the last two matches in this stadium, he's won them both 1-0. Yeah. Um, you know, didn't, it wasn't even enough for, for Inter to dominate this game two years ago. Uh, we still somehow managed to lose that match 1-0 under Spalletti. So, uh, yeah, this is tough. I hope that the players are not thinking about Slavia Prague because this is, this is an ugly match. Um, I hope everyone comes back from the international break fit and firing because we're going to need them. There's a lot of tough games coming up. Uh, I think this will be. I, I I wouldn't be surprised if this was there was this was either nil nil or maybe there was one goal in it. It's going to be that kind of ugly, yeah, horrid that's match. Agreed. That's my same but impression. I I yeah. just hope that we get the goal. Yeah. <laughs> then no, be exactly. the one that's up the okay. tag. <laughs> well, just quickly before we move on, uh, give me a prediction and a goal scorer, if any, will. Okay, well I'll 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 go for one nil to to Inter. Uh, I would not be surprised by a third consecutive 1-0 for Torino, but I'll, I'll say 1-0 for Inter. And, oh, uh, I think Lautaro, I'd like him to score because, um, you know, he's, okay. he's, he's nice. <laughs> OK, he's nice. that's the best reason I've ever heard. Um, yeah, Fulvio, just quickly, who do you, uh, Fulvio, who do you, um, who do you uh, think will score and, and what's the... Uh, yeah, who do you think will score and uh, what's uh, what's the result? Oh well, uh, I would like to I would like to embrace uh, the will thesis about the one nil, but realistically speaking, uh, I I'm afraid that uh, this will be a draw, probably yeah. one one, because uh, Inter is conceding a lot, and uh, I suppose that at some point uh, we are going to concede in one goal. So I would go for uh, for a draw, one one, I would say, and um, the scorer will be into the midfield. So probably it could be could be Candreva. Mm. Oh, nice one! Sheridan will be happy to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> right, Mo, who do you? What's uh, scoreline? Uh, sorry, uh, predict scorers and result. Uh, sticking my neck out on this one, I think it's a three one. Oh, uh, for Inter. that's not gonna. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, Unless I think I'll get a red card in the first ten minutes. I'm sorry, Mr. Positivity has gone too far. Yeah. No, I think I think it's uh, it's not going to be a particularly good game. I don't think it's going to be uh, one of those games where we dominate. It's just that Inter are going to score, uh, Torino are going to equalize, Inter are going to score again, and then Torino are going to try and win it and or uh, find the draw, and then Inter are going to find the goal, a sneaky goal right at the end. It's going to be an ugly match, but we're going to walk away happy. Okay. But that's, that's why I see but, it, yeah. By the way, by the way, did you did you remember that uh, in uh, the Torino game we always uh, receive a one card? I remember yeah. Vidic and I remember yeah. Andanovic. Yeah. I remember yeah. Politano last year. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. watch for the let's watch for the cards, right? But that's yeah. that's that's part of you know making into frustrated. You know, they they make it that kind of bitty match where cards exactly. start flying exactly. around. You know, so. I, I, I think that the only way that this match could be any more of a more door kind of vibe to it is if it was played at this Marc Antonio Bentegodi in Verona. For me, this is rain, this is nil-nil, this is Mazzari or Cazzari, as my fellow co-host on, <laughs> <laughs> on uh, st- the Serie A show, uh, John Solano calls him <laughs> Cazzari. Uh, <laughs> so, no, for me, this has got nil-nil written all over it. Uh, I think it's going to be one of those games where people are going to wish that they would have had gone to the dentist instead of having watched it. Uh, so that's where I am. Um, right, uh, let's move on to the part of the show where we pay tribute, rip the piss out of, and criticize someone or something in the world of football heavily, starting with the negativity. This week's Moji, which will be presented by Mr. Fulvio Santucci. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, um, so it's always difficult to talk about this kind of things uh, in uh, 2019, but we need to do that. And uh, once again, we need to talk about racially abuse of players uh, into a pitch. And um, this time uh, happening into the European qualifying match, not only, to be honest, because it happened the same uh, in uh, the Netherlands second tier match, uh, but, uh, you know, since it's not so broadcasted, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, probably difficult uh, also to... Uh, also to understand about that, but uh, what happens into the Euro European qualifying match, it's always so it's always something that uh, counts and needs to be needs to be spotted and needs need, needs to be reported. So, the match was uh, Romania versus Sweden, and uh, it was a crucial match for both to obtain the the access uh, to the um, to the group stage of um, of the European Championship. Um, and uh, what happened at some point is that uh, the, the Sweden Ishak was racially abused from the um, from the supporters of Romania and uh, he reported to the um, to the referee which was Gianluca Rocchi by the way so an Italian what, one was it Daniel Orsato see yeah sorry sorry Daniel Orsato sorry it was Daniel Orsato uh, and um, yeah that's uh, and that's something that um, um, that Orsato uh, show uh, show in the last uh, in the last two weeks uh, to to care about because uh, he stopped the match like he, he like he stopped the match uh, the Olimpico match between uh, Roma and Napoli for the same reason, right? Um, the only thing is that uh, uh, what what is really uh, the, the the worst part of this is that the Romanian players uh, pretend to hear, hear nothing because they knew that there was not their benefit, right? But that's a completely different situation. You should not be silent about that. You should not be. You should. You should not uh, caring too much about 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 your. Uh, um, I mean, your garden here, because you know racism is now a problem that uh, we should never talk about, but we need to talk about. So everybody needs to take the responsibility on that. Anyway, the match was suspended, and um, Ishak after the match will say that uh, the referee promised uh, to uh, to suspend definitely the match. In case of a sec on a second racial abuse, abuse, which is which happily did not happen, but still, it's uh, it's difficult to, to to understand something like that, especially if you think that uh, Romania Bucharest uh, will will host the European uh, European Championship, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's not it's not it's not a great uh, it's not a great uh, you know mm, it's not a great card for, for yeah. them to to show something like that. So. I suppose that there's a new protocol now into the UEFA, but uh, a lot of things have been promised uh, and a few things have been done. So I hope, I really hope that uh, this uh, this uh, facts will gonna stop because we witnessed already in Bulgaria last month with yeah. uh, with Raheem Sterling from England, and that is something that is uh, repeating and repeating and repeating. And when you have something like that, that means that uh, you are not taking the right actions in order to stop that, right? So. Um, I hope this is the last time that uh, I need to talk into this show about about racial abuse. But uh, since uh, it uh, happened and we need to we need to face that, uh, I think that uh, that's the worst moji that uh, we can name today. Amen, amen. Right, let's move on to something much more comical. This week's frog, which will be presented by Mr. Will Beckman. E clamoroso autogol di Ranocchia. We are delving into the murky, mysterious world of non-league football for this week's frog. Um, mm. This week's frog is a 31-year-old goalkeeper called Tony Breeden, who plays for Nuneaton Borough. Um, <laughs> now, what happened? This was at the weekend. Believe it or not, football does still happen on international breaks. And uh, <laughs> this is in the seventh tier of English football, the Southern League Central. <laughs> uh, Nuneaton Borough were playing Stratford at home. The match was nil-nil. Uh, and with half an hour left, Nuneaton were awarded a penalty. Uh, and for some <laughs> unknown reason, uh, Nuneaton decided to let their goalkeeper take the penalty, <laughs> Mr. Tony Breeden. So up he comes, um, looking forward to uh, what could potentially be a, a fantastic moment that could go around social media for all the right reasons. And um, unfortunately, it, it went around social media for all the wrong reasons, because... Uh, not only did he miss this penalty, he skied it so far over the bar that it actually broke a light in the stands <laughs> that was uh, on top of the stand. So he takes the penalty and uh, and it actually hits this this light or the floodlight that's uh, at the top of this rather sort of rickety stand. And 
thankfully the the light is clearly sort of suspended by some kind of harness or, or string so it just sort of dangles in the middle of the stand <laughs> after he's taken it um and you know the, the non-eaten twitter got very excited about the fact that the keeper was going to take their penalty and and then they felt a little, they were a little bit embarrassed um, about what happened after that. Thankfully, they went on and won the game 2-0, so it didn't actually make any difference. But uh, I think that the grounds video of this. Oh, there is, of course, there's numerous video things. Yes, it's on The Guardian, it's on The Sun, it's on Sky News. It's, it's, it's gone around social media, but just not for the reasons that either he or the groundsman would have hoped. That is absolutely brilliant. I I. I love, I love, this is the definition of the frog of the week, in my opinion. So well done, Will. Right, let's move on to something much more positive. This week's uh, Moratti, which will be presented by Mr. Positivity himself. And if he sounds extra positive, it's because he's been on a holiday this past week. Mr. Mohamed Nassar. He's, he works a lot, he's intelligent, and he surprises uh, people sometimes with his uh, ideas. Not easy to find one person of this uh, quality. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, uh, look, it's very difficult to find uh, real uh, candidates for positivity during an international break. But uh, so I'd like to give a shout out to the international break for finishing. That's that's uh, one good thing uh, we have to look forward to. Um, the other thing, honestly, uh, I have to give a, a you know a commendation to our very own uh, Nicolo Barella with the Italian uh, national team. He had a practically a man of the match uh, performance uh, against uh, Bosnia. And uh, watching while we're recording right now in the background against Armenia, he's uh, completely bossing the midfield. And it's just fantastic to see this uh, young man who's, who looked very young man, who looked quite, uh, quite shaky in the beginning of the season for the first two or three games, flourish and develop uh, both for club and country. So um, I guess uh, he's my Marathi of the week. Mm, nice one. Uh, that's, uh, that's all we have time for this week. I'd like to thank Sheridan Bird. I'd like to thank you, Fulvio. Thank you very much, Nima. Thank you, everyone. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's uh, hear each other very soon. Yes, don't be a stranger. And I'd also like to thank Mohamed Nassar. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Always a pleasure. And the now soon-to-be middle-aged Mr. William Beckman. Thank you. Good luck, everyone. It won't be pretty this weekend, but no. uh, we'll get through it together. Indeed. And as always, I'm your host, Dima Tavali Ruzzari, wishing you a good week, three points, and sempre e solo Forza Inter. Forza Inter!